Quite often, you as a project manager will have to collect requirements yourself. And in this video, I want to share simple tools and techniques that you can use if you have zero experience in business analysis. Okay, I want to make it very clear that business analysis is a separate profession with its knowledge base and it's a full-time job. The best thing that you can do for your project is to persuade your clients and customers that they need to hire a dedicated business analysis to your team. But quite often clients don't want to pay extra for the business analyst. And for sure, yes, you can collect requirements and write specifications. But I want you to be very transparent with your clients about your skills and knowledge in business analysis. And I advise you to create a risk related to requirements identification. Okay, nothing helps and you as a project manager still need to collect requirements. So how do you do it? And let's start with the main mindset of a business analyst. All requirements identification starts with identifying the project goal and project objectives. Why? Because all requirements that you collect and specify should help you to achieve one of the project objectives. If a requirement doesn't help you to achieve the project goal, you should try to avoid it and remove it from the scope of this project. If you don't have specified objectives for your project that you can refer to, your clients will try to fit everything possible into one project, into one product release. In the long run, your clients won't be able to achieve their business goals. They won't get the revenue that they expected because they spend resources on things that didn't help them to achieve the project objective. Okay, that's the overall mindset to filter out unnecessary requirements. Now let's talk about the process of collecting requirements. So first you need to talk with your stakeholders and clients and collect stakeholder requirements. These are requirements that they think that will help them to achieve the project objective. So you take these high level stakeholder requirements and go to your team to discuss possible solutions to implement these requirements. So you may have one or several solutions and you will provide these options to your client. They will select one of the options and for this option you will specify requirements to all the possible details. Then you need to collect non-functional requirements and maybe you will have to specify some capabilities or performance metrics that your product or service should comply with. And ideally you put all the requirements that you collected into a requirements traceability metrics. Okay, now let's break it all down step by step and I'll explain what tools and techniques you should use to write out perfect requirements. Okay, what does it mean to collect stakeholder requirements? In many cases, it just means that you connect with your clients, customers and key subject matter experts on your project and you just interview them what they think will help to achieve the project objectives. In most cases, they will provide you some high level vision or understanding or maybe some features that your product or service should have. I always recommend that you try to drive your clients to describe requirements in terms of business terms, business needs and user experience. So don't expect that clients will provide you the full solution, the full specification for the product or service that you need to develop. You as a project team and subject matter experts will have to transform their high level business needs into a small and more detailed requirements for your product. So let's for example take a look at Gmail. A high level stakeholder need or requirement might sound like that a user need to be able to log into their account. From here you will derive a lot of functional and non-functional requirements. For functional requirements I recommend that you stick to user stories as much as possible. That's one of the simplest forms of requirements documentation that you can use. So what kind of functional requirements we may have with this uh, login page? For example, we need to have a form, maybe a two-step form as you see it, first to input the email, then the password. 
Also, the next functional requirement, the uh, I forget my password link. And then maybe localization, I can change the language of the page. Then we'll have a lot of validation features like email should be in the right format. After that, we'll have some errors and notifications that, for example, password is incorrect or something like that. But likewise, we'll have a lot of non-functional requirements like security, performance and so on. For example, how do we transfer the password from this page to the server and back? It should be encrypted, there should be a certificate and so on and so on. As you see from one high level stakeholder requirement, I derived like dozens of user stories and small requirements that you need to implement. But how do you know about all these nitty gritty details? How do you know that you need all these functionality and capabilities for the product? And one of the most efficient ways to come up with these detailed requirements is a technique called competitor analysis. As a starting point to collect some inspiration and ideas on how to implement this functionality or feature, you can look around and see what the competitors in your industry or similar products have. For sure, you can't just copy uh, other application or other part of application without infringing the intellectual property. But you can get inspiration and main ideas and best practices because all the applications, all the services, all the products in the world use the same best practices. That's why I recommend that you build a routine of analyzing the competitors in your industries. You want to collect inspiration, solution that they have, because it will help you in the long run to build your project. Now through discussions with your team and through analyzing your competitors and some documentation in your industry, you will come up with some solutions and options. You want to capture them in a written form as user stories or specifications. As for user stories, you can find lots of information on the internet, they are quite simple. But I recommend that you combine the generic user story with Kirkin syntaxes to describe the acceptance criteria and the details of user story. I'll leave you a link below this video to the article that explains what it is. And if user stories are not applicable in your industries, you can still use good old-fashioned specifications. But as we said before, you are not a professional business analyst, you are a project manager, so you can write specifications in any kind of form and format. It's just a document where you try to describe all the possible capabilities of your product or service. The only requirements to the user stories or any kind of specification is that you understand them, your team understands what's written in this specification, and your clients understand what you describe. And as much as possible, you want to describe 100% of the main use cases for your product or service. And that's why I also recommend that you support your specifications with some diagrams of the workflows or state flows. And if possible, if you have designers, you need to create UI designs for your product. Written text is good to capture all the requirements and avoid ambiguity in reading them, but visualizations, diagrams and UI designs will help you cover more of the use cases. So what are the tools and techniques you can use here? First of all, as I said, you capture all these requirements into requirements traceability metrics, and I will leave you a link in the description to a video about RTM. Then, as for techniques, for sure you will use interviews with your subject matter experts. You will use brainstormings and you will use just meetings to discuss possible solutions. The last and it's a critical step in the process is actually to get approval on all the requirements that you collected and specified. You need to develop a specific process where you make your clients, customers and stakeholders to read through the requirements to certify that they understood them and they agree that that's the approach we will take. Just keep in mind that based on these requirements, you will plan the whole project. You will come up with durations, budget, uh, risk management, quality management, and so on. All right, last but not least, we talked about functional requirements, non-functional requirements, but always keep in mind that there are also requirements to your project management approach. So you need to ask clients, customers, and inside your company, what are the requirements to project management? 
Do you need, for example, to create a work breakdown structure? Do you need to create a requirements traceability matrix? Do you need any other tool or piece of documentation on your project? Formally creating and maintaining any piece of this documentation requires efforts and you should include this into your project plan as well. So there you have it, a simple process which starts with communicating with your key stakeholders to collect stakeholder requirements. Then you go to your team and try to elaborate on the possible solutions for implementing these requirements. And the key technique here is competitor analysis and meetings with your team to collect their expertise. You capture all the requirements as user stories or specifications and you track all the requirements and progress on collecting requirements through requirements traceability metrics. You always keep in mind that you have functional, non-functional and project management requirements. And last but not least, you get approval on all the requirements in your list. And throughout the whole process, you check each piece of the requirement against the project objectives. Does it help you to achieve a project goal? If no, discard it. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and YouTube will suggest you more videos on requirements management and project management in general. But for now, I also recommend that you watch a video on requirements traceability metrics and another video on scope management because that's the next step in the process. Just click one of these links and I'll talk to you there. Bye-bye.